Today is the first video in a series that I'm calling Pet Clinics. This is where we go in together and I talk about the best way that I can think of to build a certain pet and which heroes it really pairs well with. So stick around in this video for everything you need to know about the Snow Peak Rock. Let's get started. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiscool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons. And in this video, I aspire to educate you on specifically the Snow Peak Rock, but I plan to do a series covering every single pet. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. Now, the Snow Peak Rock is kind of an exciting pet because it's really, really good with the defense break synergy. Now, if you're newer to pets and you're like, bro, this whole thing is a little bit confusing, let me run through some of the basics of why the Snow Peak Rock is actually strong. Now, the one skill you actually want when you capture a pet is called the talent skill. Anything you have above and beyond that is gravy. That's nice. You're hoping to get extra stuff, but you probably won't, and that's fine. You get the talent skill, and you work with that, and you're off to the races. Now, for the Snow Peak Rock, the talent skill is a passive. And this talent skill, by the way, for every pet, really defines what it is there to do. So the Snow Peak Rock gives you a physical attack boost based on your luck. It also has a 30% chance to deal damage to the target legion when you inflict a defense break. Now, that damage factor with the one star level of the ability is 36 damage factor, and it is physical damage. Now, there are some very obvious hero pairings that you would put with the Snow Peak Rock. That, of course, includes Nico, who has a defense break on his active skill. It includes Kanara, who has a defense break, by the way, in her awakening. And so if you don't have her awakened, there isn't really synergy at all. But when you do have her awakened, when you launch a normal attack, you have a 20% chance to inflict a defense break. That's freaking huge. In addition, when we look at talents, um, it is the ambush talent that has a chance to inflict a defense break on the target. That's pretty good as well. Even, I think, for Rondil does a defense break. He does. However, I don't think that the Snow Peak Rock is great with Ferondale. I would say that obviously the Berserk Phaedrake is the better choice. That's topic for a separate video. So basically anywhere you could get a defense break, you'd find synergy with the Snow Peak Rock. But there is one other place I can think of that does a defense break that we still need to review, and that is the Rattle Spear. Okay, the Rattle Spear, passive. When your Legion inflicts a defense break, you gain Defense penetration. Now, okay, the Rattle Spear itself isn't inflicting defense break, but like, doesn't it seem obvious that like all of these places that are working together to inflict defense break should stack together? And I want to present to you a concept from Rise of Kingdoms, the predecessor to this game, the one that this is based off of. And I think it's probably true here that perhaps there is some diminishing returns when you reach very, very high amounts of a stat. But the same is true in reverse. The more of a stat you rip off of somebody, the more effective each point you rip off of them becomes. This is kind of a complex topic, and you may have to just kind of like take my assumption on this one and run with it. What I'm basically trying to say is the more defense you can remove from the enemy, the more insane it's going to become. So all these defense breaks and all this defense penetration really stacks up on Nico and Kanara, and I think that that is like the most obvious place for a Snow Peak Rock. Now really, anywhere Kanara goes is gonna be pretty damn good with a Snow Peak Rock. Probably anywhere Nico goes would be okay, but it's just on the active skill. It's all of them together that in my opinion makes the Snow Peak Rock pretty damn good. Now that's what I'm using, and what I wanna talk about is what other skills should you put on your Snow Peak Rock? And this is kind of a weird one because there's some obvious choices and there are some less obvious choices. I want to go over some of the more obvious choices initially. To do that, we'll go to the skills screen and we will uncheck this button that says owned only so that we can show all of the available skills. 
Now, one thing that's really important to understand when we evaluate skills is to really take in the fact that these skills are modified based off of your base attributes. And actually, technically, it's your total attributes. So the attributes of the pet determine how strong a skill is or is not. And uh, for this pet, agility is the highest. And luck, actually, technically, the luck bar looks like it's even higher. So luck is the highest, then agility, then strength and intelligence, then to some smaller extent, endurance and spirit. And so you can look at these total values on your pet, and that can help you determine, hey, which of these skills is actually gonna be like really, really powerful. So you can see that although my agility rolled S tier, technically I could have had a higher agility roll, okay? Let me show you what I mean by that. Here you can see this uh, Sapphire Phaedrake has almost, almost literally the highest possible intelligence you can get in the game, okay? So when the bar is more full, that shows you that your pet has a higher potential, okay? And you can toggle between the base attributes and how much they grow by and the sort of total current attributes that you have. And that's based off of the level of your pet. So the higher level your pet gets, the higher these will be. Um, and their growth rate is determined by this plus number over here, okay? So why am I telling you all of this? So what I think is happening is that these skills, if you had like 100% maximum luck that you could possibly have on this pet, I think that this skill over here could go as high as a 3x multiplier on these values. So I originally was looking at some of these skills and I was like, I'll give you an example here. Um, I was looking at this one. It gives you seven rage and seven healing factor. And I was like, bro, seven rage. I mean, like, come on. But when I actually looked in the battle log, I was getting a multiplier. Now this thing isn't max level yet, but I was getting closer to 14 rage. And I was like, oh, so this is a little weird, I think, I could be wrong, in the way that this is worded. I think you can actually get much more than what's shown here based on your attributes of your pet. I think you could get a 3x multiplier, I think. I'm really shooting from the hip on that. So why am I saying that? So look, this looks like it's 36 damage factor, but if you had like max luck on this pet, I think it'd be like triple that, and it starts to be a more meaningful number, okay? Um, that same of of all the skills we're gonna look at, I think. Now you can go test this for yourself and look in a battle log and see. Uh, but if we look at the skills, the obvious skill to go and get on your Snow Peak Rock is something that enhances the damage that you're doing over here with concentration. So right over here is Forceful Concentration, which increases the damage by 2.9% based off of your strength. Now look, I have been saying this a lot to help people really take this into context. The most important thing is you get this skill. All this is doing is enhancing this skill by 2.9%. So like, compared to just getting the main skill, okay, this enhancement is very small. It's very, very, very small. So this is like a very tiny boost. So I want people to really understand when they look at their war pets, like actually <laughs> these skills, they matter, but they like only do this much, okay? Now, granted, if you had a two-star version of this, all right, or even a one star to match what I have here. Um, now you're looking at a f almost 5%. It's 4.8% damage boost to this skill. But again, remember, that's still just 5%. The original skill is 100% of goodness. This is just a 5% boost to the damage, okay? This is very important. From here, other skills. I think forceful concentration is a pretty obvious choice. However, in addition, I think that one other very obvious choice, as I was describing earlier, is to go in and reduce the uh, defense of the enemy. So more defense penetration. Shield breaker to me seems very critical. So you're going for all these ways to reduce the enemy's defense. We go for another way. Just absolutely decimate the effective defense of the enemy when you go to hit them. So you go for shield breaker. That seems pretty good. So forceful concentration and shield breaker seem pretty good, okay? From here, you have a lot of options. I went with manic might to give myself some physical attack. I went with poison gland to bypass enemy hit points as well. Um, I have this because I picked it up when I was getting pets. Uh, it's heart wall, gives me a shield. It's kind of whatever. Um, pursuit predation makes it so my skills have a higher chance of critting. 
right? None of these actually are particularly synergistic with Nico and Kanara, like actually. So what if you're using Nico and Kanara would be particularly synergistic, right? There's a couple things that come to mind. First of all, if we get a look here, um, I want to give myself a higher critical chance when doing normal attacks and doing counter attacks, okay? So here I can boost my crit damage, but there are actually skills that increase your critical chance for normal attacks and counter attacks. Eviscerate, crit rate, increased when your legion does physical normal attack damage. Why am I trying to increase my crit rate of normal attacks and counter attacks? Here's hit back, this is a good one. Because when you look at Nico and Kanara, you'll see that they increase their normal attack damage and counter attack damage. If we look at Kanara, she increases her normal attack damage, okay? And she increases her counter attack damage. So now if I can get these things to crit on top of all these damage boosts, we're in a pretty good spot. So if I go back to my Snow Peak Rock, okay? And we talk about what would I put in an ideal world, we now have several things. We have concentration, we have forceful concentration, we have shield breaker, we have hit back, which is increasing my crit chance of my counter attacks. And also uh, we have, I think it was eviscerate, increasing my crit chance of my normal attacks as well. All those seem really good. That still leaves us more skill slots, depending on the way you run your pet. And given that this is a physical attacker, I think that fierce attack is actually a slam dunk. 40% chance to deal damage to the target when your deputy casts a rage skill, 35 damage factor. I mean, look, if we just do some raw math for a minute, okay, a 40% chance to do 35 damage factor whenever you do your uh, rage skill on your deputy probably ends up being a commensurate or similar-ish amount of damage to concentration. Maybe not exactly, but like these numbers start to get to be pretty close. I think fierce attack ends up being probably one of the better skills to use. Maybe I will add it at some point. I mean, right now my pet feels fine. It's been doing great. I do think Fierce Attack would make this pet better. And then from there, there's obviously ways that you can enhance that. Um, but one thing you could consider, in addition to the sort of Fierce Attack combo with, with sort of all the other things that work well with Fierce Attack. So for example, let's see here. Uh, we've got Super Fierce Attack. Gives you a higher trigger chance. That seems pretty good, right? Especially on this pet where luck is going to be really high, ideally. I think that would be a pretty good pickup. So super fierce attack would be good. But the other thing you could consider, depending on how much you feel like you're getting attacked uh, and how much you want to go all in on counter attack damage is counter strike, which gives you a 50% chance to deal damage to the attacker when they attack you. So it's boosting your counter attack damage and also wild counter strike, which I happen to own right over here. 100% chance when counter strike activates to do skill damage to the enemy, four damage factor. These seem like choices that I think would be pretty good. Um, another couple skills that you could go and grab if you wanted. I don't think I actually, oh, maybe here it is. Um, Blood Roar is pretty good. Your crit rate when your Legion deals physical war pet damage is pretty good. So especially if you move in on uh, Fierce Attack, I think going in on Blood Roar will be pretty good. Now you're sort of enhancing it. But remember, this is really expensive, 480 currency. And it's in, it's just increasing your crit rate. Like, you get more damage just from having the ability. So certain abilities really enhance things a lot. And the majority of these are just like micro-optimizations, truly. If we look at the skills that I don't actually own, I don't think there's anything in here where I'd say, oh man, I really, really wish we had this. What is super concentration? Your trigger chance. Okay. If you get so lucky as to pick up super concentration, which gives you a 1.4% increase to your chance to trigger, I mean, bro, do you see why I keep saying like the base ability gives you 100% of what it does and this is enhancing your chance to trigger by 1.4%? That is a pretty small damage boost, <laughs> okay? So yeah, like some of these are pretty nice. Would love to have it. Super follow-up? Yo, trigger chance increase. There's some cool ones here that, you know, I don't own. I'd have to capture a pet to get it maybe or have to pull it for the pet. So um, what is my final? Oh, angry roar. Uh, crit rate 3.6% when you deal physical 
pet war damage. Yeah, compared to Blood Roar. Crit rate. Oh, interesting. Wait, Blood Roar, crit rate, 3.6%. Whereas Angry Roar is just another way of getting 3.6%, but it's agility. I think both of these would stack, by the way. I think Angry Roar and Blood Roar would stack. And I did notice there are several instances where, like, here's Timely Strike based off of agility, and it does the same thing as Eviscerate. It literally even has the same icon, but I think they stack because they're different names. I don't know for sure, but I think you could get both of them, actually. So I think if we're going for the maximum synergy on this pet, we go for Concentration, Fierce Attack, okay? I like Forceful Concentration. I like Shield Breaker a lot. And then I think it's actually Blood Roar, because that would benefit all physical damage being dealt by the pet, and also Angry Roar. Do you really have a pet with eight skills, and how much are you really willing to... uh Deploy skills to have them land in the right way. Oh, you know what? Hmm. Actually, Tooth and Claw looks pretty good, too. 2.2% damage. I mean, that, that has some multi-synergy with a couple of these, right? So there's another option. Okay, Tooth and Claw. We, we did it. I think this gives you a pretty good sense of, I think, how to use the Snow Peak Rock. I, and I think this guide's pretty helpful, but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. The only other thing I could do to, like, really enhance this Snow Peak Rock is if I wanted to do a ton of regenerates and like, bro, what are the chances that I get a legendary and like I get more skill slots and that I get luck to be higher? And the thing that I've sort of come to realize is that like, I think this pet that I did was a good start, but I would probably be better off rather than trying to get another legendary here and using regenerates. I would probably be better off just building a second Snow Peak Rock. And I, I could look at this one and say, you know what? This one is great. I did a good job with it. It's pretty good. But obviously, I have, uh, I'm have missing an overwhelming majority of the skills I think that would be better. So I think this was a fun first attempt at a Snow Peak Rock. i probably go and capture some more. Maybe I get the one-star talent skill at some point and then go in and upgrade it. Um, and in terms of pet priorities for me right now, I think I actually have talent skills on all the pets that I want to have talent skills on. So now I just need to kind of go in and try to get upgraded talent skills in some cases. Like, this is not a one-star talent. It would be nice if it was. So, you know, this legendary is fine for now, but there's a ton of room for improvement. And I'll be talking about that in a subsequent video. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. I think the Snow Peak Rock is actually one of the more straightforward pets. So we'll talk a lot more in depth about some of the other ones and what other options you have because some pets really work in a lot of circumstances. Like this Golden Rock, I'm really enjoying. If you want to see my overall guides for pets, I'll have cards in the end screen. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.